Rainforests are planet Earth's last paradise. They're so amazing and beautiful. These incredible places cover only 6% of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of the world's plant, animal, and bird species. They teem with life and are a sanctuary for many species of Earth's wildlife. They're vitally important because they produce most of the oxygen we breathe. They safeguard our fresh water. They're the original source of much of our food. And they're the world's largest pharmacy house, providing much of the medication we use to ensure our health and well-being. Rainforests are planet Earth's great storehouse. And importantly, these rainforests carry a special message for us today. Join me on a journey as we continue to explore the wonderful world of the rainforest, the last paradise. This huge mound of leaf litter in the heart of the rainforest is raked up by one bird, a male brush turkey. It's actually a giant incubator where females come to lay their eggs. Amazingly, the male maintains the temperature of the mound at a constant rate. He achieves this by removing leaves when it gets too hot or adding leaves if it starts to cool. He instinctively knows that decaying leaf litter generates heat, just what's needed to keep eggs warm. It's springtime now, and he's been working hard to get the mound ready. It's taken him months to build it to this size. When a hen ventures into his patch in the forest, he welcomes her with typical male bravado. With lightning speed, he digs a nesting hole. The mound needs to be around 33 degrees, and he tests the temperature with his beak. Just right. The egg she lays is large, and she will produce a number of eggs during the spring. The female leaves to recover from her egg-laying efforts, but the male remains on duty to protect the eggs, which he does with tremendous energy. A python approaches. He knows there are eggs in the mound, but these normally powerful, menacing reptiles just sometimes meet their match. The turkey has to judge this one just right. He doesn't want to get within lunging distance of the snake, but he has to get close enough to give the snake a faceful. Such a lot of effort by the male to protect the eggs. But by the time the chicks emerge safe from the mound, the parents have lost all interest. These little fluff balls are going to have to fend for themselves. After hatching deep in the mound and struggling all on their own through the leaf litter to the surface, these little survivors are able to fly immediately. Down on the rainforest floor, Life is abundant, but here, even snakes encounter unfriendly neighbours. However, creatures like these reptiles have learned to respect and live with each other and avoid unnecessary conflict. Black skinks, one of the largest skinks in the world, relax in the warm, sunny patches on the rainforest floor. They spend much of their time watching over their young, as they learn to fend for themselves. The forest is also home to two species of bowerbirds. This resplendent region bowerbird has built a bower of sticks on the rainforest floor. The bower is not a nest. It's a carefully built stick structure designed to attract females. He has decorated the floor of the bower with his prized treasures and is lovingly perfuming the walls with aromatic leaves to make it more appealing. The female is impressed 
and flies down to be greeted by an excited courtship display. He enthusiastically welcomes her and presents his forest treasures. With that impressive performance, who could say no? He wins her heart and she accepts his advances. The spring rains arrive and swell the rainforest streams. The female region bowerbird has built her nest near a waterfall and is raising her chicks. Her cryptic colouring is in stark contrast to her mate's bright attire, but her chances of survival and that of her chicks are much better for it. She cleans up the nest before she leaves, eating the berries dropped by the chicks. They grow quickly and at two and a half weeks are ready to leave the nest. As a single parent, she must divide her time between gathering food and caring for her young. After their flying adventures, the family settle beside a sleeping rainforest dragon. The dragon lies motionless on a limb. He blends in with his surroundings and relies on a lack of movement to escape detection. Sharp claws in the back and a swift peck on the nose is just too much for a dragon to put up with. More widespread is the intriguing satin bowerbird, and these highly competitive males just love the colour blue. Anything blue they can find gets pride of place in the bower. The problem for this satin bowerbird is that sometimes he must leave his bower to forage for food and search for new treasures to enhance his bower. A male with a bower close by takes this opportunity to vandalise his rival's bower and he sets about the task with great haste and obvious relish. He's nervous and he knows that any moment now the proud owner could return and catch him in the act and he would be in big trouble. Male bowerbirds consider these blue feathers to be prized possessions and the intruder knows they would add some real class to his bower. The owner hurries back, but it's too late. His masterpiece is in ruins and he knows he has much work to do if he is to stand a chance of attracting females. The male's obsession with this complex mating ritual leaves him no time for family duties. The female's life is that of a single mum with a nest of hungry beaks to feed. Bowerbirds are rainforest fruit eaters and this female times her nesting to take advantage of the ripe fruit of the native raspberry. But where is the male? He's back at the bower, practicing his best dance in the hope of attracting another visitor. Among a thousand shades of green, red is the colour that stands out above all else in this rainforest. But red is not the only vivid colour here. Rainforests from around the world are custodians of flowering plants, all with their rich colours and stunning beauty. Antarctic beech trees are a true relic of a lost age. Their fossil ancestors have been found entombed in rock beneath the Antarctic ice cap. Remnants of these trees are now only found on these high mountain ranges and most do not rely on seeds to germinate, but depend on suckers from the same old rootstock that developed into trees time and time again. The fronds of the bird's nest ferns cleverly drain rainwater and leaf litter back into the centre of the plant where it is needed. They also draw moisture from the damp air and provide homes for a host of small forest creatures. The epiphytes, along with the enormous tangle of vines that shroud the trees, amount to almost half the bulk of this rainforest.
Many rainforest trees have shallow roots and they rely instead on extensive buttresses for stability. Storms come in the warmer months of the year, bringing torrential rain, strong winds and lightning strikes, ripping holes in the canopy. Branches can snap off, burdened by the added weight of epiphytes and vines. And when rain loosens the roots, the storm can bring down huge trees. But these gaps in the canopy can create an opportunity for new growth. Ferns and kanjivoy thrive in the newfound blaze of light and giant stinging trees reach for the sun, eventually sealing the gap in the canopy once again. These are thought to be the world's tallest stinging plants, growing to 40 meters in height. Their large, heart-shaped leaves are covered in tiny barbs that can inflict an agonizing sting. Yet, despite their formidable defenses, these giant trees come under attack from an army of grazing insects. They graze with tremendous enthusiasm and no doubt consider these leaves to be a delicacy with the poisonous barbs adding some spice to the meal. Huge brush box trees with massive buttresses provide shelter from strong winds that blow against tall, slender rainforest trees. Their nectar-bearing flowers offer food and energy for flocks of colourful rainbow lorikeets. They move hastily through the foliage, pausing only to lick and savour their sugary meal with specially adapted tongues. Hollows in the brush box trees provide drinking holes for these overactive birds. But there is only room for two at this drinking hole. The others must patiently wait their turn. The two drinkers have decided to cram into the water hole for a bath, further testing the patience of the others. Lack of room soon causes trouble and the squabbling pair finally leave the water hole for others to enjoy. Rainforests are extremely biodiverse and this biodiversity is essential to the health of our planet. Of all the living things on Earth apart from bacteria, it is insects that are the most successful and plentiful. There are three times as many insect species as all other species combined, and new insects are being discovered constantly. The insect body is the best adapted to life on Earth and insects have exploited just about every ecological niche on offer. The rainforest could not exist without them. Insects are essential for plant pollination. Flowers, their colour and their scent are the signal that nectar is on tap and nectar's function is to attract the pollinators. So plants need the insects, but the insects also need the plants. Most species of plants are eaten by insects and the insects are a feast for hundreds of hungry mouths. As the day draws to a close, thousands of fruit bats or flying foxes stir ready to leave on their nighttime foray for fruit and nectar. This colony of bats leave their cave at night to hunt for flying insects. They navigate their way through the tangle of branches and vines in total darkness, echolocating their prey with their finely tuned acoustic senses. Just because it's dark doesn't mean the rainforest will sleep. Plants go into their dark cycle, still producing energy by burning sugars that they photosynthesize during the day. Food is abundant in the rainforest. It also nourishes an entire nocturnal community. Pygmy possums are nectar eaters and they play an active role in pollinating flowers. 
as well as possums. There is an array of shy mammals with most delightful names like Antichinus, Fuscopes and Fascogale. Red-eyed green frogs spend an enormous amount of energy trying to attract a mate. And it's a risky business because they can attract more than just the desired female. Night hunters like these highly venomous snakes know that during summer, frogs always come to this pond to mate. One of the most secretive and successful night hunters is the brush-tailed Fascogale, searching through the rainforest in erratic, jerky movements with a super-sensitive nose. It sniffs out any insects trying to hide in the cracks of dead branches. Brush-tailed Fascogales lead solitary lives and only go looking for mates during the cooler winter months. By morning, this night hunter will be safely tucked away in the hollow branch of a tall rainforest tree. Down on the rainforest floor, bandicoots are sniffing out spiders, grubs and insects in the leaf litter. The juveniles are a little hesitant about venturing forth from their hideaway hollow log. This little fellow can't make up his mind and he eventually decides to come out another way, cautiously poking up through the leaf litter. Nothing escapes the attention of their food-finding snouts. Any foreign sound in the rainforest night sends the juveniles scurrying to the safety of their log home. But they are soon back out in search of another tasty meal. Tiny pygmy possums, the size of small mice, emerge warily from their sleeping hollows and move off into the night in search of fruit and nectar. Rainforest figs provide a sugary meal and plenty of energy for this little fluff ball. But there is more to be found in this big rainforest. Nectar-bearing flowers, like this subtropical waratah, is what they really relish. But they can't linger for too long out in the open. With predators lurking in the rainforest, it's best to head for the safety of the shadows. This mother spotted tail quoll has successfully raised well-fed young. She has taught them to forage and sniff out food for themselves. Being youngsters, they're always looking for opportunities to chase each other and play hide and seek around their log home. Quolls are very capable hunters with powerful claws and sharp teeth making them one of the most feared predators in the rainforest. The climate here in these high mountain rainforests suits some impressive creatures. This Lamington blue cray survives in the creeks of the rainforest. They only thrive in a climate that is stable, damp and cool. Many other creatures of the forest also come to these shady pools to drink and to bathe. The rainforest is one of the last bastions, home to a unique community, survivors of a golden age. Every creature living here is precious, and we must do all we can to protect their home, this complex and beautiful world that is the rainforest. The lyrebirds have been singing their songs of their ancestors for as long as the rainforest has been here. May our children have the pleasure of that glorious song for ages to come. A wise man once said about 200 years ago, in wilderness is the preservation of the world. Maybe it's time for us to heed these words and let the wilderness lift our spirits and breathe new life into our busy lives.
But the rainforest does more than that, much more. It carries a special message about our origins that gives us meaning, purpose, inner peace and happiness right here and now and gives us hope for the future. In the rainforest, we see beauty, order, design, precision and balance. This indicates that the rainforest is the outcome of intention rather than chance. It's the result of design rather than accident. The rainforest tells us as forcefully as anything can that a master designer has been at work. The Bible identifies this master designer in its opening sentence. Here's what it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So the message of the rainforest is simple and clear. All the abundance of life here and beyond right across planet Earth didn't get here by chance or accident. Rather, life began with God, the master designer. Now, do you see what this means? It means that life has a purpose, particularly human beings, the pinnacle of God's creation. It means that you are not an accident. Your birth was no mistake or mishap and your life is no fluke of nature. It's not fate, nor chance, nor luck, nor coincidence that you are you, that you are alive and breathing at this very moment. God was thinking of you when He made the world. In fact, that's why He created it. He planned it with great precision. It's custom made with the exact specification that makes human life possible. God designed this planet's environment just so we could live in it and enjoy it. We are the focus of His love and the most valuable of all His creation. You are alive because God wanted to create you. There's a reason you are here. Nothing in your life is arbitrary. It's all for a purpose. The master designer has a plan, a wonderful plan for life. And he had a plan in creating you. He has a plan for your life. He made you for a reason, and your life has profound meaning. We discover that meaning and purpose only when we make God the reference point of our lives. So see yourself as God sees you. Study God's Word, the Bible, and you'll discover that you're precious, created by God. You're not an accident. I can assure you that God wanted you. You are valuable. You have worth. You are gifted. You are talented. And you have a purpose on this earth. This is a truth to build your life on. If you'd like to do that, why not start right now as we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, today we want to recognize you as the master designer the creator of heaven and earth. We thank you for life and for the amazing and beautiful rainforests that you have given us. May we recognize their importance and do all we can to protect and preserve them. And may we remember that not only are you the divine master designer who created our planet, but you're also our loving heavenly father who made us, guides our lives and promises us a home with you one day soon. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Rainforests teem with life. More species live in rainforests than anywhere else on Earth. These incredible places cover only 6% of Earth's surface, but yet they contain more than half of the world's plant and animal species. As many as 30 million species live in rainforests, including one third of the world's bird species. But how did it all start? This rainforest and all its inhabitants, just how did they get here? Where did they come from? Life. How did it begin? Well, there are really only two options. 
all the life that we see here in the rainforest happened or got here either by accident or by design, evolution or creation. If you'd like to take a look at the evidence and consider this question of how life originally began, and if you're looking for hope and ways to find inner peace and true happiness, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the book, How Evolution Flunked the Science Test. This book is our gift to you and is absolutely free. There are no costs or obligations whatsoever. So make the most of this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone or text us at 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website tij.tv to request today's free offer and we'll send it to you totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia, or PO Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. If you've enjoyed today's journey through the rainforest and our reflections on how life began, then be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together. Until then, remember the ultimate destination of life's journey. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away.